Uncle Freddy, how are you doing? Greetings, King. Well, go on, everything all right? Yes, man. Give thanks and blessings. I'm sending blessings to all of Ghana right now. We give thanks, Uncle Freddy. And all the people listening to Asase Radio. Mm -hmm. Give thanks to the blessing. We give thanks, Uncle Freddy. We give thanks. How, how has the vibe been like you now, Uncle Freddy? Um, yeah, I let my character. The birthday is actually June 27th, which is this Tuesday coming. All right. And we're dropping, and we're dropping this new CD on my Earth Strong. But I was watching the program all along, too, and I want to send a big shout out to Cyan Hero. Respect, Father. Respect, Father. Yeah, man, I, I love his vibe, and I want to big up all the young artists coming through Ghana right now. Respect, Uncle Freddy. Respect, Uncle Freddy. My Fred. request to all the young artists is to just try and keep the music positive, you know? Definitely. So we can, we can grow up a, a whole new positive generation of Ghanaian young kids. Definitely. Definitely. Through the music, yes. Definitely. And maintain the culture. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. All right. Yes, ma'am. Uncle Freddy, we live on four radio stations across the country right now. I'm talking about... 99.5 in Accra, that is the capital city. Easy. 98.5 in Ashanti region, Kumasi. Easy. In the central region, that is Cape Coast on 100.3. Easy. And in the northern region, Tamale on 99.7. Easy. Uncle Freddy, over 40 million people are listening to us right now. Easy. And uh, we must say we are grateful to have you on Asasi Radio. Yes, I give thanks. All I right. give thanks. Yes, yes, Uncle Freddy. Let's go into a bit of how you started your musical career. I have a lot, I have a, a bit of question you know, um, for you, but let's start with this. How did the eyes start, you know, the eyes journey into music? Well, I grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in a province called Clarendon in Jamaica, which is outside of Kingston, a couple of miles out. And there was a group called the Clarendonians with Ernest Wilson and Peter Astin who were members of that group. And they became very popular in Kingston and across Jamaica. So the whole Clarendon thing became famous and everybody rooted for their artists from their different provinces. And so I, I Ernest and myself, we went to the same school, his primary school. And every Thursday we used to sing at our school. So word started to go that little Freddie can sing. Mm -hmm. And I, I made up a song called Roll Dumpling Roll. If you want to know Dumpling Sweet, dip it in a coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And that song became popular in my community. And everybody would ask me to sing that song all the time. And so my popularity built that way. So at one stage, Ernest and Peter was getting ready to go to Kingston for a recording session at the famous studio called Studio One, which in Jamaica is the equivalent to Motown Records in America, where all the great artists and musicians came from. Mm -hmm. and, and Ernest's mom... Her name is Miss Settlin, God bless her soul. She told my mom that they were going to Kingston and that they weren't going to leave me. And my mom said, but Jetta, I don't have the money to pay in fear. And she said, don't worry about it, I will pay his fear. And lo and behold, um, that Sunday morning, she, she booked my, 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 my ticket on the bus. And I went to Kingston with Ernest Wilson and Peter Astin. And the rest was history from there. We ended up at Coxon Studio, 13 Brentford Road, Studio 1. And Mr. Dad fell in love with my voice. And from there on, I just continued and never stopped, never looked back. All right. So so, so now, in that group called the uh, Clarendonians, you know, singing with, you know, your partner, Ernest and Peter and all that, how, how did the item end up and how did Freddie McGregor, you know, step out, you know, to be that kind of solo artist that that is now you know, um, pursuing his own solo career? Well, Mr. Dad, like I said, he recognized my voice at the time and thought I had ta talent. And he took me to live at his house with his family in a place called Pembroke Hall in Kingston. And 
pretty much I grew up there. So every day I was in the studio, and every evening when the studio was closed, I went home with them. And it just continued from there. And he was the one who started to give me a lot of rhythms to sing on by myself. And Bobby Babylon, I think, became one of the biggest ones out of it all. And from there, I just didn't look back. I never wanted to go back to the country like that. I wanted to have a career in music so I could help my family, uh, my mother in particular. Mm. And I stayed there. I kept myself out of trouble. And I just tried my best. Wow. And and the good Lord helped me, you know? All right, all right. Like Wait. I heard Stian say a while ago, yeah. the good Lord. Yeah, he's gracious to us. Definitely. And all we have to do is just ask him. And he will do it for us. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, God. Easy. If God is for us, who can be against us? Easy. None can be against us. The words of Uncle Freddy. Easy. Ladies and gentlemen. I also mm -hmm. tried my best to stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. and, and to be as best as I could. Because I was a, a very young kid at the time. And I didn't have my parents around me. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of people who, who guided me and teach me. Mm -hmm. And I followed the instructions and tried to be my best. And that's how I came through. Patience is a virtue. Definitely. And if you believe in yourself, just give yourself time. And all things will work for you, you know? Yes, Uncle that's Freddy. That's how I approach my career. Yes, Uncle Freddy. Yes, Uncle Freddy. Easy. And that's why, that's why I want to send my love out to all the young artists coming through in Ghana right now. Definitely. Just believe in yourself, be patient, and once you have your talent, just know that God will work out the rest for you. Definitely. Do what you have to do, and he will do the rest. Yes. Oh, God. Easy. And my love goes out to all Ghanaians today. I love Ghana. I love Ghana bad, really bad, you know? I know. I consider myself a Ghanaian too. Definitely, definitely. And I, can't, I can't wait. And you know, let me tell you, mm -hmm. last night I spoke to Sister Marcia Griffiths. Yeah. And she said to me, Freddie, when you do the interview with King Lagazi, mm -hmm. send my love to, uh, to Ghana. Tell them I love them very much. And I'm hoping that um, Sister Marcia and myself will visit Ghana soon. Wow. Um, to be in, in concert. Definitely. And, and to and to establish our foundation there. Of course. As we love Ghana. Of course. And and let me tell you this. My my chairman, the CEO, is a big fan of Freddie. You understand me? Yeah, man. Thank so you. so thanks. Thanks I, very much for that. Yeah, man. I, I can guarantee you an authority that something will happen very soon. And and seriously, Sister Marcia. I've, I've sent a couple of messages to Sister Marcia and look like she's not looking at my way, but I know that the internet is no, kind maybe of... Maybe she never have the link, but I have the link because I, I talk to Sister Marcia almost every day. And she's very excited, so I'm going to make sure I give her your number nice. and you will get a call from Sister Marcia and the link will be made. All right, thank but, you. Thank you, Uncle Freddy. Thank you, Uncle yeah, Freddy. Assassa Radio is our radio. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, and yard settings is our yard. Yeah, man. Easy. Are you so we are set it. We are set it. Definitely. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. You know what I mean? Uncle Freddy, you know. Yes. Um, a lot of people are asking me a lot of questions. My phone is buzzing. You know, someone goes to boom and say, Lagazi, I've been following Uncle Freddy for so many years now. Please ask him how many albums have him. I stopped counting when I got to 41. <laughs> Yo. Countless. And the, the last album I released uh, is called True to My Roots. Mm -hmm. And there's a nice song on that album that I love so much. It's called One of These Days. It said the wicked must go down one of these days. Mm -hmm. A beautiful song Definitely. from that True to My Roots album. Definitely. But yeah, I've had I've I'm gone over forty albums. And and, and Tuesday, this Tuesday coming will be my sixtieth year in music. Wow. And I'll be sixty seven because I started when I was seven years old. Wow. And six, sixty years after, I'm still doing my best in music because that's what I love. That's what jazz blessed me with. You Def know, music. Definitely. To spread the word of love across the world. And Def I've been trying to do that. 
ever since I was seven years old. Wow. Wow. Wow, Uncle Freddy. Easy. This, this is so touching. Seriously, this is so touching. And, and I, I don't even know what to say. You know what I mean? In terms of your music now, were you associated, you know, with any sound system back in the days? Yes, we all started out pretty much with sound system. Uh, at Studio One, the boss at Studio One, Mr. Dad, he had one of the biggest sound systems called Coxon Studio One. Mm -hmm. Coxon Sound. And so we got the opportunity to take the mic and, and vibe to the rhythm tracks. That, that was the baddest rhythms of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's how people like myself, Sugar Minot, and others, we came through by vibing and sound systems. All right, so... I would like to know from you, how did the sound system prepare the item career those days? It, it, yeah, it, it, it did prepare the career for us because it made it easier when it became time to, for recording. It became easier for us because we already had that sound system experience. And, and not to mention dub plates. Mm -hmm. You know, back then it was like today where we use digitally. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, um, acetate, which is a black dub plate. Mm -hmm. And when, when a person buy a box of dubs, mm -hmm. um, you put on a needle, mm -hmm. just like you're playing an album mm -hmm. and vinyl, mm -hmm. and you could make mistakes because you would damage the dub plate. Definitely. So we had we, we had to be sharp, you know, Definitely. to not make mistakes. Definitely. So those things prepared us for when it's time to, for recording. Because when I started recording, there were only two tracks, one track for the band, one for the singer. And you can't make mistakes because everything would have to stop and go over from beginning. So there was a level of nervousness as well as a level of professionalism mm -hmm. because the musicians can't afford to make mistakes and you, the singer, can't afford to make mistakes either. Definitely. So so everyone would have to be on point. But Definitely. those things help us a lot, you know, help us to become so much more professional at what we do. Definitely. And I'm thankful to those that I learned from. Definitely. Definitely. In terms of the doublet now, in terms of you being nervous and all that, you know, um, what exactly was the trick? Was it constant rehearsal that when you enter into the studio and they put a pin and press it and they say, they count you that one, two, three, cut, and then you start to sing. Was it constant rehearsal? How, how, rehearsal, how, yes. how were you keeping up? All right, like, for example, the band, Scatterlights, led by Jackie Mito at the time. Mm -hmm. These were all professional musicians. So when you come into the studio, they ask you, um, because they call me Little Freddy at the time. Mm -hmm. Little Freddy, when we hear the song, you're going to know. And I would sing the song to Jackie Mito, mm -hmm. who plays the piano. And Jackie would work out the progression for the song. Mm -hmm. And then they all rehearse the song a couple of times. And once they had it right, mm -hmm. the, and the engineer got a good balance, the engineer said, we're ready. And everybody said yes. And he said, red light. When he press, presses the recording button, a red light comes on. That means no noise in the studio. And everybody is ready. So the drummer would count off, and the song begin. And once we start, we don't expect anyone to make mistakes. So we have to continue for that three, three and a half minutes or four minutes, however long the song was, without mistakes. And we do that constantly, wow. uh, rehearsing. So after a while, it, it became natural to us not to make mistakes, you know. But we did put a lot of work into it All right. in the beginning. All right. And that really, that really paid off. All right. So, so it means that nowadays artists who go into the studio and do cut and paste, the, yeah, nowadays people can cut and paste and do all kind of stuff. They, they, they're having a grand time doing that. We we never know anything about that. We never had those level of technology. So wow. It was harder, much harder for us. But but we learned from that. That really propelled us to what we we are today. All right, all right. Easy. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest is Uncle Freddy, and trust me, one of the legends when it comes to you know um this music business reggae you understand me when it comes to the you know doublet aspect of 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 it too in terms of sound system culture uncle freddy plays a very big role and trust me as a sound system you must have uncle freddy in your box
as a you small better. sister, you must have Uncle Freddy in your box. You know what I mean? Now, the doublet I am yearning to get from Uncle Freddy now is prophecy. The song prophecy. You will. Um, as you say it, you will. <laughs> You will, you will have that ASAP. Oh, I God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uncle Freddy, thank a you so any much. Anything for King Lagazi, anything for yard settings. And Easy. Assassin Radio. Boom, 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 as, boom. As you say, it will be done. And I'm going to make sure I get one from Sister Marcia for you, too. Oh, God bless you. Easy. God bless you, Uncle Freddy. God bless you. Yeah, man, you know. Yes, man. We give no thanks. Problem. Yeah, man. So, Uncle Freddy. Let's yes. Please. Let's touch in the sensitive part of our conversation now. Uh -huh. Last year around November, you know, yes. um, I had a call from America. You know, <laughs> a lot of people yeah. were calling me because people, I just don't know why, but people have realized on the internet that me and Uncle Freddie were good. You understand? So people began to call me and I was so shocked. I was so surprised that but why would someone call me all the way from America whilst I'm, I am in Africa to find out what is going on with Freddy? I'm like, what do you mean? But wait, wait for a second. What do you mean? What is going on with Freddy? Say, yeah, we had the news that, you know, something happened to Uncle Freddy. And I'm like, all right, let me try and reach him via the phone. I tried calling, but I couldn't get through. But long story short, Uncle Freddy, you being through this particular situation when people, um, it, it hit the internet that you've been struck down with stroke and all that, how is the progression now? How are you, how is the feeling now? You know? I, I am I, I am strong. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better every day. That was, in, that was last year, November. Mm -hmm. November 27, to be exact. I came down with a stroke, went to the hospital, I spent almost a month in the hospital. But I've been doing therapy since, mm -hmm. and I've been coming along. And I do therapy five days a week, and they're working to build me back strong mm -hmm. and to get me up and running. And it's been working, you know, and I'm thankful for all the staff at the facility who helped me. Um, I, 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 I've gotten a lot of love from so many people around the world, and I'm thankful for it, you know. If God is for us. No evil can be against us. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. I, I really have to say that. Definitely. And um, we just pray to the Almighty, and I'm thankful to Jah that he has preserved me. Because since my stroke, I've seen a lot of people, some that I know, who have gotten stroke and have not made it back fully. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful to God that he has preserved me because I still have work to do. Definitely. Um, a breath of fresh air is part of the work that I had to do. Definitely. Definitely. And I'm thankful that, that, that the album is completed and will be released this Tuesday. All right. And um, I'm getting ready to do Reggae Some Fest, which is the world's biggest reggae festival. And um, I have seven shows in the UK as well with me and my sons, Stephen the Genius and mm -hmm. Chino, mm -hmm. and um, the Code Red Band. Wow. And we have work to do, so our work is not yet over. All right. So I, I'm thankful, and I, I'm thankful to all the fans and the people who send out prayers for me and, and wish me um, speedy recovery. Um, those prayers work, and I receive them all, and that helped me to come through and be strong right now. So I'm thankful. We give really thanks. Thankful. We give thanks. But but um, Uncle Freddy, somebody might ask. Yes. Um, as I saw the lineup, I'm like, whoa! Already, Uncle Freddy want to step on the road. Somebody might ask that. Is it not too early for Uncle Freddy to step on the road? Well, if, if, if you understand what I said to you, since I was seven, this is what I've been doing. Definitely. It's difficult not to be able to do it. And my willpower and my faith is that I want to be able to do it. So I have to be strong for me and strong for my fans. Definitely. But that was like eight months ago. And I, I, I through faith, I've always said, um, I, I, I should be okay by July 22nd for some fest when they first approached me. And I've been working on that program still. Wow. And getting myself prepared for it. Well, vocally, nothing is wrong with my voice. Mm -hmm. So that's the greatest part of it. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to sing my songs that the people love just the same. Mm -hmm. um, 
the stroke affected my left side, my left shoulder, and my left leg. Mm -hmm. But I'm still I'm, I, I, I'm still able to move. So I'm thankful and grateful. So uh -huh. it won't stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. Of course. Which is sing my songs. Of course. Of and course. I thank God for that. Of course, Uncle Freddy. And um, Uncle Freddy, on this part also, I learned the tour will be ending in Kenya. So you'll be coming to Africa. Can you repeat that for me, please? I, I said, I, I learned the tour will end in Kenya. You'll be wrapping up in Kenya. In yes, Africa. we are putting we are, we are putting together um, an Africa run at the moment. I love Africa, you know, and I made a song called Africa, Here I Come. Mm -hmm. And I'm sticking to that dream because Africa is where I want to finally settle. And I must tell you that Ghana is a place I'm looking forward to settling because I love Ghana. I, I love the history of Ghana. I know the history, the whole slavery, the whole movement. And I appreciate that the government has opened, opened itself uh, as the first government to offer um, African people from the diaspora the opportunity to return home. And I want to be one of those persons. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to coming to Ghana. Oh, God. If you have any question, please type in your questions and ask Uncle Freddy. Please. You understand yes, you're welcome. Yeah, I, man. I'm willing to answer th those questions. I would like to say big thank you to um, Shona Fenin. Anywhere you find yourself, Shona, big up yourself, man, for, for making sure I'm that... sure she's listening yeah, and she's man. watching. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Respect. Respect every time as well. Oh, God. Um, big respect to Selector Nico and the whole crew. Big respect to um, Junior Maestro all the way in Norway, far away. Wow. Um, okay. So this one says, Lagazi, please ask him. Um, how exactly did he train his children to become so musically powerful? Well, I didn't train them, to be honest. I just I just did what a father should do. I built a recording studio with the hope that if my kids love music, we will have it. And as it turned out, it worked out perfect. Stephen, when he graduated from high school, he went straight into the studio and honed, honed his skills as a producer and became one of the top producers. Right now, he has a soundtrack for the new Spider-Man movie. And he has won seven Grammys. He has won himself one Grammy also. And they're doing well. They're popular. But I didn't I didn't force them into music. It just all happened because I built Big Ship Studio. Wow. Wow. Big Ship Studio. Easy. Yes, sir. Big ship sailing in the ocean, and we don't want no commotion. Crazy. And I can tell you too that part of that inspiration was Ghana, which is why that song became such a big song. Because we were looking at the movement of the slaves from Ghana and the ship, and that is part of the inspiration for Big Ship. Wow. All right. So, so the album, the captain, the captain. You know, a lot of people you know, been asking me a lot about it, that what exactly inspired that particular album, Uncle Freddy? Um, just the positiveness, the positivity, the struggle for our people and where we are today and where we, where we, where we need to go. Um, I try to be positive. I try to, I try to talk to the people through my music and uh, using positivity. And we have to speak about the, the, the topics of the day and, and and to try and maintain our cultural heritage as, at the same time. Wow. All right. Okay. So, so my inspiration is through Rastafari mm -hmm. and, 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 and learning to read the Bible. One chapter a day from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, so we can understand better Definitely. Um, what we're reading. All right. And so th those are the inspirations I put into music. All right. So, so Uncle Freddy, one Jenna which is kind of eating into our space right now is Afrobeat. And then Jerry Chichidudu from Hohe in the Volta region says, King, ask him, ask Uncle Freddy what he thinks about Afro, you know, music taking some airspace in Jamaica. Well, it's not just Jamaica. It's all over the world right now. 
but that, that that was long coming you know because the african people have been held down for so long but it was just a matter of time before they break out to the rest of the world and as we can see africa is on the move right now and um we have a long way to go but it has started and afrobeat is wiping out um hip-hop soul music and everything um it's strong right now so strong and um it's it's from african people so it's us it's our music mm -hmm. and and we we embrace it well i embrace it because it's part of us it's part of our heritage yes um our music also originates in africa because we recognize ourselves as african people from day one and we know the struggles and we know where we come from and we know about slavery and everything so it's all about africa and the african people so I am not surprised that Afrobeat has become so big right now. And we expect it to get even bigger. And we expect African people to take over the entire earth. So that's a movement that is happening right now. Wow. Easy. Wow. And we were being we were being enslaved for many years. Now we are going to become the slave the the, the, the masters. And and our our slave masters will become our slaves. Definitely, definitely, Uncle Freddy. Easy. Definitely. This is a prophecy. You know what I mean? Prophecy. And Junior Maestro, all the way from Norway, far away, says, Revelation time. Ghana was inspired for the track Big Ship. Freddy McGregor says so. Easy. What? What? And, and, yes, that's very important. Big up, Junior. Yeah, man. And trust me, if you look at. Freddie McGregor is wearing a kente dress and I'm wearing a kente dress. You understand me? So it is no coincidence. You understand? Easy. Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. Yes. What a beautiful a African piece. Yo, 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 yo. yo I... We say Ghana to the world. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Easy. I have some friends. I have some friends who were there a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And um, she brought back this shirt for me. Wow. Real beautiful shirt, yeah. And I thought it would be appropriate doing the interview today to represent my African garbs. Definitely. My Ghanaian shirt as well. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. Wow. So, Uncle Freddy, if if yes. I ask you right now about the new song featuring um Alicia Khan and also Black Prophet, Walla Walla mm. Weng Weng, you know, what exactly inspired that? Well, the rhythm track was was made by Alicia's husband. His name is um, Good Boy Elliot mm -hmm. from the Gambia. And you know, the Gambia is a place that I've been to and love very much. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to Gambia, I was treated like a king. Mm -hmm. And the pe I was surprised that the people know my my music so much mm -hmm. from from the very young kid to the oldest person mm -hmm. and that was very fulfilling for me nice. and then he good boy made a rhythm track mm -hmm. and then um i took it to my big ship studio mm -hmm. and i wrote the song for it and i have an, another song i'm going to send you on the rhythm by admiral tibet it's a remake of time so serious cantangorous and dangerous all ah, right and the rhythm track and then i i, I um i met up with with with, with black prophet mm -hmm. in the uk mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about doing a, a collaboration and I sent him the track and then the rest is history. Wow. I, I love his part and the Jamaican people love him, love him very much. Wow. And I think that song is going to get a lot of traction because we have a, a, a competition coming up, a dance competition for the Walla Walla Wing, where we're asking people to create their own dance, video it, send it to our IG and the one that people love the best will be featured in the original video for Walla Walla Wing. Wow, wow. Easy. Let's talk about the album now, dropping on your edge strong, Uncle Freddy. A, yes. A breath of fresh air. Well, yes, I wanted, we wanted to do something that was refreshing. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yeah, we wanted to do something that was refreshing mm -hmm. and, and, and come back to the grassroots of the music. Mm -hmm. Since it seemed as though we were drifting drifting away from the foundation of the music. Mm -hmm. So Dilly from Stingray Records in the UK, mm -hmm. who's my cousin, and I 
we were really tight. You know, we made songs like Keys to the City, among other songs. Mm -hmm. And I love working with Dilly. So for the last three years or so, we've been working on some tracks. Mm -hmm. And we just record them. And every chance I get to go to London, we continue recording until we, we, we decided we have enough tracks. So let's put the album together. And it's it all comes together. And we end up with a product. Well, we were sitting in the studio and we were listening down to the tracks that we have and I thought, well, this is a breath of fresh air. And everyone shouted, that should be the title of the album. And it really stuck. And that's how we, we titled the album, A Breath of Fresh Air. All right. You know, when, when Uncle Dilly came to Ghana, he was with me in the studio. Around that time, I was on, you know, Hits FM those days. Okay. And he was with me in the studio. And seriously, oh, yo... I, I need to phone Uncle Dilly and, 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 and you know, tell him a few things. You understand me? And yes. I, I, I am glad to know that he's your cousin. So I can see the, 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 the connection the connection right now. You know what I mean? Yes. How, how many songs do we have on this particular album? Breath of 14, a Fresh Day. 14 tracks. All right. Do we have any feature on it? Oh, okay. So already you have... Um, Walla Walla Wing Wing Wing. and Walla Walla Wing are the two singles, the first two singles. Okay, all right, all right. But ap apart from these two feature, Black Prophet and Alicia, do we have any other fe fe featuring on it? Collaboration. No, that's yeah. the only collaboration we have on the album so far. Wow, wow, wow. Easy. There's a track that I recorded for Dilly with myself and Gaparangs, but we weren't able to put it on the album since we already had 14 tracks. Okay. And we, uh, and we didn't want to overdo it. All right, all right. So, Julia Maestro again stepped in and said, Afrobeat music has been a long time coming. We should embrace it and own our destiny as masters of the future. Frederick McGregor, words of manifestation. Easy. Listen, you can't go wrong when you're talking to Uncle Freddy because Uncle Freddy is full of knowledge. And sometimes my worry is, why can't the youngsters can't approach the elders to tap into their knowledge so that some of these things will be revealed and made known to them? But almost all the time, you see, in our industry, there is a vast difference between, or the, there is a vast gap between the 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 the, the you know, the experience or the 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 big artists and then the young ones. And Uncle Freddy, I it, I seem not to get it simply because I feel like the youngsters should be able to approach you, the elderly ones who have the experience and all that. But most of the time, you you kind of realize that the youngsters will be one side and then the aged will be one side and all that. And he doesn't speak well of us at all. I don't know what exactly do you think is bridging, is, is kind of breaking that gap between the young and the, and, then, and then the experienced ones. Yes, I think it goes both ways. Um, one has to make themselves accessible to the youths so the youths can tap into that energy as well. And I guess some artists are seen as unapproachable. But we 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 love youths and we love to build champions. We don't break champions, we build champions. So when we see the youths who are talented, we urge them on, try to share our, our experiences with them. And the ones who will listen will always be successful. And the ones who doesn't listen will struggle. And that's why I said to you when I came on first, enough respect to Cyan. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I like his reasoning and I like his positivity. And that goes out to all the young artists across the land and breadth of Ghana also. Definitely. You know? Definitely. And my thing is, just keep the music positive and spread the love. Love is the key factor here. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, sp spread the love and keep the music positive so the young youths who are coming up can have something positive to draw from. Definitely. 31 minutes going into the R2. Exactly 3 p.m. will be out of here. Listen, it's been it's been seriously, you know, learning and also, you know, revelations with Uncle Freddie on the show. And I I am telling you on authority, 
and if you are watching this interview via Asasi 99.5 Facebook page, I want to tell you that as you can, yo, Mikey Jones, big up yourself, man. He said the captain himself is here. You understand me? And uh, my boss, Nana Otujanda, says, join in later. Rasta uncle, my favorite. I want to, um, I want to roll off the Big Ship album in his career. You know, the, the Big Ship album now, I, I, I've got countless of people asking me about that. The Big Ship album. Uncle Freddie, well, if, if, if you can throw some more light sorry. on it for us. That album was produced by Linval Thompson. He has a label called Thompson Sound. Well, he approached me about doing this project, and uh, the rest is history, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, Big Ship, the album, the song Big Ship, became an instant hit everywhere. And even the cruise liners took it on. Every time a ship was leaving port, they played the song Big Ship. And when they're coming into port, they play the song. I think Big Ship, the song Big Ship is one of the longest reigning song in, uh, uh, on the cruise ship charts mm -hmm. around the world. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. many people may not know that the cruise ships also have charts, music charts. Yeah. And Big Ship stands up as the number one song for a long time. Wow. Wow. And, 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 and seriously, when you come to the sound system culture arena, almost every sound system... I don't know who don't have big, big ship. If you if you call yourself a sound system, you must have big ship. Yes, big ship win a lot of clash, sound yeah, clashes. Definitely, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Wow, wow, Uncle Freddy. So, Uncle, I'm announcing to you that Uncle Freddy is ready, ready like Freddy is ready for the road. He said he's been doing this at the age of seven. You understand me? He would turn yes. 67 on the 27. On Tuesday. On Tuesday. He's been doing this for 60 years now. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, man. And I thank God for that. Wow. Our praises to the Almighty. Wow. 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 Easy. Wow. 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 All right. So, um, Edward Ohini Jang of Nexus Sound System said, can he give us a link for songs that need to cut the plate of him? Um, yes, yeah, Shana is the link. Shana is the link, right? Yes, and you have Shana's information. Right. But uh, my IG, my IGs, um, my TikTok is Freddy underscore McGregor. That's F R E D D I E underscore McGregor eight seven six. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is at Big Ship Freddy. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so if you have this info, please, um, you log on to that, and trust me, you will have access to Uncle Freddy, and trust me, your dot plate, you know, his ready your life plate will be delivered to you As via online services. Definitely, quick and fast. So, M Mikey Jones also step in and said, Lagazi, in a sound system with with no captain, um, with with no captain doublet is no sound system. My sounds, uh, Mau Mau sounds, is Freddie McGregor sounds in Kenya. You understand me? Oh, I got a lot yes. of Freddie. Wow. <laughs> so, my, now, now, Mikey just want to flex me now that <laughs> his sound in Kenya, the Mau Mau sound, has a lot of Freddy. All right. We wait till Uncle Freddy says, Yo, Lagazi Sound International. Whoa, this. Wait till Uncle Freddy say that. Easy. Yes, Lagazi. You will have more dubs than you can imagine. Def Trust me. Definitely, man. Definitely. Definitely. So, Mikey Jones, big up yourself. And Junior Maestro said, What is his message to Africa about preserving our environment, growing our own food? Yes, well, I, I must tell Junior that I am a farmer. Mm -hmm. I currently I currently have a 20-acre farm in Jamaica, and I farm a lot of fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and food too, like cassava, yam, 
all different kinds of stuff, pumpkin, etc. And that's what I love. And that's why I'm looking to settle in Africa, where I can expand that experience and knowledge feed, to help to feed our people and to export as well. So that is part of my personal goal. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Freddie is ready. I would like to say big respect to our chairman, the God himself, Mr. Gabi Yotridako. Anywhere you find yourself, large of Godfather. Easy. Yeah, big up yourself, Mr. Gabi. I can't pronounce the name. Gabi Yotridako. Yeah, yes, man. Yes, big up yourself. Yeah, man. Enough I... love and respect to you, sir. Yeah, man. And also the CEO, that is George Ander, the CEO. Big up yourself, man. No Mr. Forget. Under, big up yourself. Mm -hmm. Astasa Radio is number one radio. That's my radio. Easy. Yard settings are the big bad program. Yeah, man. It don't know, man. Yes. man Every I... Jamaican love King Lagazi. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. Easy. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. Enough respect to all the other um, DJs on the station, too. But King Lagazi gone where are head right now. Definitely. Definitely, Uncle Freddy. Francis Martin Yota says, uh, King, Uncle Freddie is celebrating his birthday with my wife and daughter on the same day. Wow. Wow. wow I give thanks. I give thanks. Wow. I will remember them wow. in my birthday prayer wow. on Tuesday. Yes, I. Mikey Jones says, big up for the interview and good works, King Lagazi. Give thanks to the captain too as well. Um, Vincent Azi, uh, Azan, Gidi says, Lagazi, please tell Uncle Freddy I love him and I follow him since I was a small, um, since I was small, big up on his prospect, respect large, coming from Vincent Aza Gidi. All right, so yes, Vincent, give thanks and you bless up yourself and God bless you and your family, brother. Yeah, man, and also, um, Otujando, Nana Otujando. You know, um, the head of technical department at Asasi Radio says, I'm sorry, fingers were all crossed um, over the place. I will want to know how will his era be able to influence this generation caught in frenzy of Afrobeat to push out consciousness with the new found world attention. Well, that's what we're hoping for because we have to use the tools that we have to strengthen our people and the young generation. And that that will depend on the message in the song. It's fine that we love the Afrobeat and we love the rhythms and stuff, but we need to make sure the message is strong and positive, just like Bob Marley did for reggae, so we can educate and uplift the younger generations. So he's correct on that. All right. But that's my vision where uh the music Afrobeat is concerned. All right. All right, Uncle Freddy. Um, wow, I have a lot of messages and all the messages keep coming up and down here and there. Oh, now we can be talking to the captain of the ship. That is Uncle Freddy McGregor. You understand me? Uncle Freddy, it's 40 minutes going into the R2 on Assassin Radio. I would like to leave you for you to take a rest. You understand me? Yes. But before I leave you finally, your word of advice to the world. Because the world is listening to you right now. We have over 40 million people them in tune, you know, listening to you right now, Uncle Freddy. Yes, that's important. But especially for Ghana, because I try to follow Ghana. Mm -hmm. I try to follow the food, the culture, the everything. Um, and, and I saw where the U.S. sending their government people to Ghana to try and influence our young kids into something that we don't embrace. Mm -hmm. And we're not standing for that. Africa is Africa. Africa is different. Our culture is different. And, and we, we are not going to embrace certain things in our, in our homeland. Mm -hmm. So we're asking the people and the government to stay strong, stay firm, focus, and, and do not let them influence us. They have already influenced us in the wrong ways from day one. Um, we're not going to allow them to influence this generation anymore. So we, we have to be strong. We must stay strong and stay focused. All right, Uncle Freddy. Uncle Freddy, I would like to say thank you so much for your time and space. I really appreciate this particular moment. And trust me, this moment will last forever, Uncle Freddy. Thank you yes, so I, much. I, I appreciate this one too. All right, trust Uncle me. Freddy. Give thanks, Uncle Freddy. 
Yes, enough love, enough blessings. And let me send a special shout out to um, a lot of my Jamaican brothers and sisters who have been in Ghana for many, many years. Um, there are too many to mention by name, yeah. but just love to you all. And I thank you for, for being the forerunners who yeah, have taken up the mantle and, and, and has dealt with repatriation in a serious way. Um, but we are here, and the, the vision and the dream is not ended. We are we are about to follow suit. So, God bless you. Just be strong and keep the fire burning. We will come to support you soon. Definitely. Blessings, Uncle Freddy. Easy. Yes, it's done. So, as the saying goes, article sound the way each and every day. Now you come to Big Bad Sound, King Lagazine and Easy. dancing. One big man called Junior Maestro. The one called Gallic, you don't know. Freddy. King Lagazine. Friday, oh, oh, oh. Ribbity bang, ribbity bang, ribbity bang, ribbity bang, 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 King Lagazi a murder a sound boy And we don't want go. no commotion King Lagazi a kill another hey. jump <laughs> Uncle Freddy says easy So as the saying goes Art calls sound the way each and every day now you Mikey Jones King Lagazi and Mikey Jones Call Junior Maestro Hold this in your chest Take your dunno <laughs> King Lagazi Friday to all my Kenyan and Gambia people them on the live, as a big respect. I don't know, Uncle Freddy is my father, you know. Right now, we're ready, 